Hey, what's up? Adam Lobo here from Adam Lobo TV. So, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz. What do these numbers mean and why do they matter when it comes to your internet connectivity at home? Well, this is exactly what we are going to be talking about in this video. Now, first things first, it is very important to pick a reliable internet provider and for me, none is as reliable as my trusty time internet that I have been with for 5 years now. Now, while it is important to subscribe to the best, fastest and the most consistent broadband plan you can afford, it is also very important to know and understand what happens when that connection is dispersed wirelessly to your devices. So what is 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz? Now I know it's confusing and some of you may be asking, do you really need to know? Does it really matter and should you even care? Well, to answer all of those questions is yes, you should. Okay, let's get down to the basics. In a nutshell, 2.4 and 5 GHz are radio frequencies that are used by the router to communicate wirelessly with your devices like your smartphones, tablets, laptops and more. And they are the two most common Wi-Fi bands offered by most routers in the market, including the newer Wi-Fi 6 models. Now, without getting a little too technical, here are a couple of things that you should know. Now, 2.4 GHz is a lower frequency compared to 5 GHz. Now, this means that it has the ability to travel further and it is also better at penetrating solid objects like walls. But on the flip side, it offers a much lower data transfer rate, which means that it is a little slower. Now, if you were to run a speed test, you would typically get results in the range of 20 to 60 Mbps. It is also prone to more interference because other Bluetooth household devices share the same frequency. The 5 GHz Wi-Fi band, on the other hand, operates at a higher frequency where it provides faster speeds but at the expense of a shorter range and if you were to run a speed test, it would typically yield 100 Mbps and above. And since fewer household devices uses this frequency, there are less congestion and interference overall. But the downside of 5 GHz is through its reach. As 5 GHz is not so great at penetrating solid objects like wall, so coverage is not as good as 2.4 GHz. Now, I'm sure you may be thinking, Ayo, how, huh? which should I choose then? Well, here is the rule of thumb. Now, the further away that you are from your router, use 2.4 GHz, especially if you have a larger home with many rooms. Now, for devices that move around with you a lot like smartphones, tablets, this lower frequency would be your best bet. Now, this is because that it offers more than enough speed for your day-to-day -day online activities like browsing the web, sending emails, chatting with your friends, watching videos and more. And if you spend a lot of time in your living room and the common area where your router is commonly placed, then 5 GHz is the way to go. Now, this is because this 5 GHz Wi-Fi band is perfect for high bandwidth activities like gaming, video conferencing, 4K streaming and sharing large files. Plus, you don't have to share this frequency with your robot vacuum. Yep, remember my previous video about robot vacuums interfering with your Wi-Fi? Do check out that video in case you guys haven't, which I'll link it down below. Now, switching between Wi-Fi frequencies manually is common with older routers, but the newer models such as Times Omni Mesh Range will automatically connect your device to whichever band is closer and also has a stronger signal. Now, you may be wondering how far or near to the router do I have to be for it to matter? That is a great question, my friend. And here is where what you will need to do. Okay, before you run a speed test, one of the easiest things that you can do is to check your Wi-Fi signal strength by looking at the little Wi-Fi symbol on your phone. If all bars are lit up, then your signal strength should be strong. And if it's a few bars down, then your Wi-Fi may be weaker and slower. Now, for a more concrete result, you can do a simple speed test around your home to find out where you can either do it through the laptop browser or download the speed test app on your phone. And if you are a time subscriber, you can do it through the time internet app. So yes, choose your weapon. But one thing to also make sure is that you turn off your VPN if you have that on or any security firewalls 
or even downloads as well. And if you're using a smartphone to test, make sure that you turn off the battery safe mode and ensure that the phone has more than 20% juice left. Then run speed tests for both 2.4 and 5 GHz connections while you move around the house and then take note of the results. Now if you find the 5 GHz connection is dropping off too much, then you may need to switch to 2.4 instead. And here's a fun fact once again that if you're using Times Omni Mesh devices, it will find the best frequency for your devices. So no more switching between 2.4 and 5 GHz where you'll just use a single SSID for your whole entire house. So that's it. Hope this quick video gives you a better understanding of these two common Wi-Fi bands so you can properly optimize your internet experience. Now, if you're not already a Time Internet subscriber, sign up now to enjoy ultra-fast, reliable and stable fiber home broadband. And I've said it before and I'll say it again that I have been using Time for 5 years going into 6 years now and it has been great. Where they provide speeds up to 1 Gbps over their 100% fiber network, they also offer the lowest price per Mbps, plus they always have awesome deals on their website and I'll leave links down below so you can check it out if you're interested. Alright then, hope you found this video insightful and if you loved this video, be sure to give this video a nice big thumbs up and subscribe to Adam Lobo TV if you haven't done so. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Adam Lobo and I'll see you in my next video.